Welcome back to another episode of the Beyond the Wormhole series and Kerbal Space Program. Last episode, we sent these two uh, base mods, the Planetside Exploration Technologies and the Planetary Base Systems, um, to the Symmet Symmetra system in the Cacao Below Planet Pack mod for Kerbal Space Program. And so these two mods are like some of the best um, like surface colony mods that, you, that are out there. And so on our last episode, we landed a base from the Planetside Technologies mod on Norik, the ice moon of the double ice giant uh, binary system, Symmet Symmetra. And today we're picking off where we left off with our craft still in orbit to take the planetary base systems base to the other moon of the Symmet Symmetra system, which is like a green, gassy, like toxic moon called Neureg. And so that's what we're doing right now. We just got we just got rid of that little mounting arm there so that we can center this base with the craft's center of mass and center of thrust. So we're just using our RCS ports to redock that and center align it with the craft once again. And then we will uh, figure out how to get a transfer from Norik to Neureg. So I'm just kind of pulling on the prograde marker in the direction that the moon is headed. And it looks like we're already pretty close to having an encounter, which is nice. So I'll just play around with that. For a bit until those up oh, looks like we got a encounter so I'll just go ahead and warp to that um, maneuver node and then we'll fire up this baby this engine is run by a uh, magnetoplasma dynamic thruster from the near future technologies mod by Nertea and uh, basically how this engine works is it uses a nuclear reactor to like ionize a bunch of gas and then shoot out the back at like high um, impulse kind of like a um, ion engine but a lot uh, with a lot heavier material I guess as far as I understand but yeah it's basically like a nuclear powered engine that ionizes uh, gas and shoots it out the back um, it's got a really high initial specific impulse which means it's very efficient so you can use it to go incredibly long distances it has a very high like Delta V I guess you might say and so that's really great for this mission where we're pushing these two giant bases around on basically an interstellar mission. Uh, yeah, so check that out if you're interested in trying out the next, uh, if you want to like up your technology level from the stock Kerbal Space Program game, I would definitely start with the Near Future Technologies uh, mods set by Nertea. Okay, so we're just coming up on our encounter with Neureg. We're on kind of like this really wide orbit right now so we'll have to do a burn um, to drop our periapsis closer to the altitude that we actually want to orbit at so I'm just doing that right now okay it looks like at an altitude of about a hundred thousand meters uh, we'll set up our circularizing burn and then I'll warp down to that. So I have to make sure to turn off my nuclear engine after each burn to save on my lifespan of my nuclear fuel. Alright, looks like that maneuver's done. Um, we're coming up on the day side of uh, Neureg. We've arrived at year 8, day 122. So yeah, we've been in uh, space quite a bit, but we're about to set up our last base, and then uh, we'll be able to stretch our legs out on some real ground, I guess. So now I'm just kind of uh, like widening the inclination of my orbit so that I can cover more ground as the moon orbits, if that makes sense. Uh, it just gives me a wider range of landing sites to uh, choose from if you're orbiting at a slightly inclined angle as the moon rotates. Um, so you'll pass over more uh, sites. That's kind of why um, the like the surveyor for like resources has to be like that that probe thing has to be placed in a polar orbit to. Um, like give you any information on uh, the resources of the planet it's because that's the only like a polar orbit passes over like almost all the planet like all, all of the uh, 
spots on the planet, I guess, as the moon um, rotates it over time. So I've just detached my base from the uh, mothership and I'll swing it around here, trying to drop that periapsis below the atmosphere so that I can begin to slow down and uh, initiate my landing sequence here. Um, so I'm just kind of like working on the RCS right now just to dip that periapsis just a little bit lower. And we should be entering the atmosphere here shortly. Just about to run out of monopropellant. And so this place doesn't have like a super high uh, gravity, so um, the re-entry heating isn't as big of a problem as it would be on Kerbin. We'll be able to slow down relatively quickly. It also helps that the atmosphere is pretty thick. Um, like thick atmosphere plus low gravity is pretty easy to aero break on, um, but if you were to try aero braking in a really thick atmosphere on a higher gravity uh, planet, um, that'd be an issue, I guess as uh, many players would know from their uh, earliest attempt to land on EVE in the stock Kerbin system, or not Kerbin, the stock Kerbal Space Program system, I mean. So we're kind of just tumbling through the atmosphere here. It's probably a little bit of a headache for the Kerbals stuck inside that fairing there, but um, this is what they've been training for. They're pulling a few Gs just swinging around here as we dip below the clouds with the uh, binary gas giants in the sky. And we just deployed our fairing to pop off and also the RCS module and there go our parachutes. Uh, yeah I've got a little sky crane here attached as well to just to like fire up a few engines to uh, slow down um, right before we hit the ground but we're already going really slowly here thanks to the thick atmosphere and we have touchdown. Let's go ahead and fire that thing up and detach it and it'll go ahead and fly away and then crash into the ground and uh, take care of itself I guess. But here is our final landing site for the Planetary Base Systems uh, Neureg base that I have built here with the, with the parts from that mod. It's got really cool modules that can like unfold and deploy as you can see. In this one I have a science module, a habitation module, and a greenhouse or a hydroponics module, and also a garage. So this is the interior of the habitation module, it's pretty cool. You can see one of my Kerbals there over at the desk over by the food and the snacks with a picture of the... Uh, golden trio on the left there and I guess this is like the TV spot um, you know I would totally kick it here uh, just missing an Xbox or something but yeah it's pretty cool that you can see through the windows in this pack and this is the uh, this is the command uh, module here you can see that we got a maybe a frozen television signal to the KSC and all these uh, I don't know pop-up menus with some chips on the desk here and a uh, to-do list and a rockets for Kerbals uh, book just to like do some studying. I guess I'm like sitting on a telescope here in the science module. There I was just a second ago um, and it looks like there's a microscope. This must be the science lab for sure. Some test tubes. Uh, yeah, but the really cool interiors to this base. I think that's my favorite part about this mod. So this is the hydroponics slash greenhouse we're growing all of our uh, food and maybe uh, producing a little bit of oxygen as well from the photosynthesis here. Uh, and yeah, it's got a pretty cool interior. That's definitely what I think this mod has over the one that we tested in our previous video. I think the interiors of this one are awesome. And so this is like the little garage airlock. I actually have a garage here with a rover in it. And so um, this is the little garage airlock to um, e exit the base and enter the uh, garage which is actually not pressurized um, and so here's my little rover in here you might have seen this guy before this is like one of my favorite rover designs and then I have like this little uh, cupola module here where it's got these nice big windows I guess maybe this can be like the uh, rover excursion control module we got our uh, don't panic book there from the uh, what is that the hitchhikers guide to the galaxy series nice little reference there but yeah we got these nice big windows pretty desolate out here we might as well get in our rover and drive around because there's not a whole lot to see in our immediate vicinity uh, but yeah we gotta plant a flag though first of course you really stuck the landing there and there we have our flag planted and our base officially set up I'll do some science 
it looks like the ground is mostly made of carbon compounds, which is really interesting. If you guys want to pause and read that, wonder how that would happen on a moon. Um, but yeah, let's take this guy for a spin, actually. Let's go visit these mountains over here um, in just a second after I get some shots of the sunrise on this planet, which is really cool. little time lapse to show the weather cycle you can just barely see the uh, binary gas giants in the sky through the clouds there and also the black hole All right, time to go for that rover excursion real quick. We're gonna head over to these mountains over here in the distance. It's relatively flat over where we are. We're kind of in a large caldera on a planet-wide scale. There's this large like caldera with a bunch of uh, like flat spots where I kind of like targeted my base to land, but we're trying to visit kind of like the edge of this caldera here, which has these mountains. Um, the majority of the moon is actually really mountainous, so it can be difficult to find a landing spot. Oh, looks like I almost totally uh, ruined the mission there by almost flipping over, but we managed to recover. But yeah, like I was saying, it's kind of hard to find a good landing spot on this mission, but I guess on this moon, I would say, but there's this nice little caldera in the northern hemisphere, um, and that's where we are right now. We're just driving up to the edge of this little caldera, checking out the mountains. Doing some science. I guess this biome is called uh, Neureg's Cliffs. It says that the tidal forces from the gas giants are um, causing the tectonic activity on the moon, if I remember right. Get a screenshot there for a postcard. You guys can pause it if you want to read that science. Pretty interesting moon, or I guess uh, celestial body, I guess. Very interesting. Kind of like Eve, I guess. Um, but a lot less gravity. So right now I'm just starting my uh, rover trip back to the base here. We're just uh, about 10 kilometers out. Oh, it looks like I've discovered some of the wreckage there from the sky crane. I thought that was my base, but it's actually over here. Never mind. Cool. Now we've uh, we're back at the base, and you guys get to see how this thing can dock back into the garage, which I'm pretty. Uh, pretty happy with how it turned out. So you just gotta do like this little like backing in maneuver here. But it docks pretty easily, which is really cool. Usually this sort of thing is kind of difficult. And this garage is just like barely big enough for my rover here. Alright, we're docked. So you can close that garage ramp there. Yeah, but yeah. 9 out of 10. This base mod is really awesome. I actually like it better than Planetside Exploration Technologies. I think it's a lot more stock alike. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys thought of this mod, this base mod versus last episode's base mod down in the comments. Really cool to hear what you guys think. So right now I'm just uh, plotting a return home trajectory with my mothership in orbit. We still have two Kerbals here. We still need to get home, so we're just burning out of the Semet Symmetra system really quick on a retrograde orbit to lower our apoapsis around the Sun Orc star that this system revolves around and eventually return to the wormhole that connects back to the Kerbal system orbiting a ringed kind of like 
Duna type planet called Sarah. So that's what I'm trying to set up with an encounter right now. Just gotta match my inclination. Okay, we got our encounter there. And so I've just fast forwarded ahead. It's like the same maneuvers as last episode, just in reverse to get all the way out here as to go back. Here we are, plummeting through the wormhole. At faster than light speeds, I guess. All right, now that we've exited the wormhole, we should be back in the Kerbal system. And uh, this wormhole orbits Sarnus for me, which is the Saturn analog from the Outer Planets mod, which I highly recommend. But if you don't have that installed, it'll just place... The Cacabalo mod will just place the wormhole around Jewel, and you can enter it that way. So right now I'm just burning uh, retrograde to get my periapsis down to intersect Kerbin. And then I just got my encounter here, just tweaking my trajectory so that I can enter the atmosphere. Or wait, no, not enter the atmosphere. I have enough fuel just to stop. Just to fully circularize around Kerbin. Because I forgot that I didn't pack a heat shield on my return capsule here. So I'm going to have to send another rocket up to come pick them up in orbit. But I got loads of those. So right now we're just circularizing around Kerbin to wait for our... Uh, to get picked up by um, some other Kerbals down at KSC with another rocket, I guess. But here we are finishing our mission. Year 26, day 321 pretty long mission um, but it's good that the Kerbals got to pack snacks and see two different moons at the same time anyways guys that's going to be about it for this week's video on Beyond the Wormhole uh, yeah let me know what you guys thought of this mini series where we got to check out the two uh, surface based colony mods let me know which ones you guys like better and I'll see you next time